Good afternoon, Key Stage 2. Mr Evans here. I'm trying something a little bit different this week to try and make my voice a bit louder and a bit clearer on your videos. So I found myself this lovely little headset. I feel a bit like an astronaut or Britney Spears or a pilot or something, but hopefully it should mean you can hear me a little bit better. Before we start our assembly day, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Lots of you may have seen on the news this week, if you've been on watching the news or reading the newspapers or magazines or looking on the internet or even following your favourite celebrities on their social media, you may have seen there have been lots of protests all around the world this week in lots of different countries in every corner of the globe. Here at Isamilo International School we are incredibly proud of our diverse community and you know that we talk a lot about how it's so important that we are treating everybody fairly no matter the colour of our skin, the type of hair we have, the god that we choose to pray to, we want to treat everyone fairly and we want to treat everyone equally. However, one thing we should do as part of that is we need to make sure also the stories that we're reading, the movies that we're watching, the music that we're listening to is also from all around the world. So what I thought today was I'd like to start assembly by sharing you one of my favourite stories. And it's a story, but it's also a poem, and it's called Ada Twist Scientist. So I'm going to cut over to Epic, it's on Epic so you can read it afterwards as well, and I'm going to share my story with you. So here is our story called Ada Twist Scientist, written by Andrea Beatty. Ada Marie, Ada Marie, said not a word till the day she turned three. She bounced in her crib and looked all around, observing the world, but not making a sound. She learned how to climb and made her big break, with a trail of chaos left in her wake. She ran through the day, chasing each sound and sight, and didn't slow down till she conked out at night. Her parents were frazzled, but tried not to freak, as Ada grew bigger, and still did not speak. Clearly young Ada, with lots in her head, would have something to say when it ought to be said. That's just what happened when Ada turned three. She tore through the house on a fact-finding spree, and climbed up the clock as high as she could. Her parents yelled, Stop! as all good parents would. Ada's chin quivered, but she did not cry. She took a deep breath and simply asked, why? Why does it tick and why does it tock? Why don't we call it a granddaughter clock? Why are there pointy things stuck to a rose? Why are there hairs up inside of your nose? She started with why and then what, how and when. By bedtime she came back to why once again. She drifted to sleep as her dazed parents smiled at the curious thoughts of the curious child who wanted to know what the world was about. They kissed her and whispered, You'll figure it out. Her parents kept up with their high-flying kid whose questions and chaos both grew as she did. Even Miss Greer found her hands were quite full when young Ada's chaos wreaked havoc at school. But this much was clear about Miss Ada Twist. She had all the traits of a great scientist. Ada was busy that first day of spring, testing the sounds that mockingbirds sing, when a horrible stench whacked her right in the nose, a pungent aroma that curled up her toes. Zowie, said Ada, which got her to got her to thinking. What is the source of that terrible stinking? How does a nose know there's something to smell? And does it still stink if there's no nose to tell? She rattled off questions and tapped on her chin. She, she'd start at the start, where she ought to begin. A mystery, a riddle, a puzzle, a quest. This was the moment that Ada loved best. Ada did research to learn all she could of smelling and smells, both the stinky and good. One hypothesis Ada thought could be true. The terrible stink came from Dad's cabbage stew. She tested and tested, but soon Ada knew it was time to come up with hypothesis two. Then zowie! That stink struck again, just like that. Hypothesis two? 
It's caused by the cat. The cat couldn't make such a stink on its own. It needed perfume and some fancy cologne. So young Ada tested. The test was a flop. She started again, but her parents yelled, Stop! Ada Marie, Ada Marie, to the thinking chair now, by the time we count three. Enough, shouted her mother. That's it, said her dad. Her parents frustrated, frazzled and mad. Why? Ada questioned. Her mother said, no. What? Ada queried. Her father said, go. You've ruined our supper. You've made the cat stink. Enough with your questions. Now sit there and think. She looked at her parents. Her heart turned to goo. Poor Ada Twist didn't know what to do. She sat all alone by herself in the hall. And Ada once more could say nothing at all. And so, and so Ada sat, and she sat, and she sat, and she thought about science and stew and the cat, and how her experiments had made such a mess. Does it have to be per so? Is that part of success? A mess is a problem, and while she was thinking, what was the source of that terrible stinking? Ada Marie did what scientists asked a small question, and then she asked two. And each of those led her to three questions more. And some of those questions resulted in four. As Ada got thinking, she really dug in. She scribbled her questions and tapped on her chin. She started at why, and then what, how, and when. At the end of the hall, she'd reach why once again. Her parents calmed down and they came back to talk. They looked at the hallway and just had to gawk. No patch of bare paint could be seen on the wall. The thinking chair now was the great thinking hall. They watched their young daughter and sighed as they did. What would they do with this curious kid who wanted to know what the world was about? They smiled and whispered, we'll figure it out. And that's what they did, because that's what you do when your kid has a passion and heart that is true. They remade their world, now they're all in the act of helping young Ada sort fiction from fact. She asked lots of questions, how could she resist? It's all in the heart of a young scientist. And as for the smell, what can Ada Twist do but learn all she can with her friends in grade two? Will they discover the stink that curls toes? Well, that is the question. And someday, who knows? And that is the end of Ada Twist, Scientist. I hope you enjoyed the story. Like I said, this is on Epic. I highly recommend Iggy Peck Architect, Rosie Revere Engineer. They are two other amazing books, very similar. But now I'm going to hand over to your teachers to start their Pupils of the Week. Good afternoon, Year 6. I hope that you have all had a good week and have been working hard. I have loved seeing you tackle all these maths problems that we have set and seeing all the spy gadgets that have been designed and worked on over the last week. So well done for that. Um, People of the Week was therefore very hard to pick again this week, but this week I have picked Morgan. Morgan has worked really hard on all his maths tasks and has created a really cool spy gadget. Um, and all the work that he has continued to submit has been of a very good standard. So well done, Morgan. Uh, the rest of you, keep up all your hard work and I'll see you next week. Hi everyone, I hope you've had a really good week. I've really enjoyed looking at all of your work this week. You've all been working really, really hard and I'm really impressed, as always. So for my pupil of the week this week, it was again a very tricky decision, but I've chosen someone who has shown excellent commitment to their learning. This is someone who has persevered, tried really hard with lots of activities and never given up. When I have said that they have done something wrong, they have tried many times to fix their, make their corrections and make their work perfect, and just always has a very good attitude to their learning. So this week's Pupil of the Week is Sanjay. 
Well done, Sanjay. You've worked so hard. I was so impressed with your English work. Your artwork this week was beautiful with those lovely pop art colours. And I want you to keep up the brilliant work that you are doing. Well done, Sanjay, and well done to everyone else. I hope you have a great weekend. Bye. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon for Jay. Once again, I'm very happy to say that I'm pleased with the work you are all doing. You've done a wonderful job this week, and I'm receiving a lot of submissions uh, from you. That is very commendable. Today, I have two people of the week. The first people of the week is someone who's done wonderfully well during this period of online classes. Right from the time we started, um, this student has submitted every single piece of assignment that has been set, submitted it on time, and submitted very high quality work. She has done literally everything from P assignments, music assignments, art, and I've been getting very good words about this student from uh, the music teacher, the PE teacher. We are all very proud of this particular student. Now, this student mm -hmm. is Hepsiba Kalubi. Hepsiba, I'm very proud to see the work that you're submitting. I am pleased that you're working very well with your parents and they have very good words to say about you. I spoke to Mr. Odera yesterday. He said uh, he's very pleased with your work, the work you're submitting in music. And Miss Martin, too, is very happy with the work you're doing. I'm proud of the effort you're putting in. Your work is always very neat. Every time I mark your work, I'm always very happy because it's presented very nicely. I'm happy with what you're doing. I'm also happy that you take advice very positively. You follow instructions. You do everything I ask you to do. And where you're not sure, you ask for clarification. This is very commendable. So, Hepsi Bakalabia, congratulations on being our people of the week this week. Well done. Keep up the good work. My second people of the week is a boy who's worked very well. Worked very hard. Sometimes I think he works a lot better now that he's at home than when he was at school. Uh, I'm seeing very good quality work being submitted. The writing is very good. The handwriting is very neat. Work submitted has very few errors. The work is always cross-checked. And he takes his time to do his work. I am very, very proud of this particular person. And this student, my second people of the week today is Ayan Alibai. Well done, Ayan. I'm very proud of you. And I'm very happy that you are, your mother and father seem to be very happy with the work you're doing. And I noticed, like I said earlier, that you are submitting work that is far better than what you used to do. So keep up the good work. I'm also happy that you're always checking out on me, see how I'm doing. <laughs> I'm very happy. <clears throat> Congratulations on being the second people of the week today and keep up the good work. Uh, for the rest of 4J, we'll see you next week. We have three more weeks to go. So I look forward to receiving a lot of good work from you this coming week. Enjoy your weekend. Do a lot of reading. Take care of yourselves. Be safe. Be good. I am very proud of all of you. Thank you very much. Ed, are you ready? We've got to work out who is going to be Star of the Week this week? So we've got three shirts, one from each house. Who will get it? Will it be somebody from Simba, Tembo or Tweega? You're going to come and have a look, see? Which shirt do you like, Ed? That one. Shall we see who it is? Okay, mind your head. All right, well done, Rishan. Edward has chosen you to be star of the week. Why? It's probably because you've been working your little socks off. We've had a rusty start, haven't we? Well done, you've done a great job these last few weeks. Well done. Star of the week is Rishan from 4E. Well done to everyone who has been mentioned so far this assembly. Before we continue with your teachers telling you their pupils of the week, you may cast your mind back to last Friday, when at the end of assembly you were set a very special challenge by Miss Reynolds. And then your challenge was to show us your best funny walks. 
The good news is, I have really enjoyed looking at all of these. The bad news is, I had over 30 different children submit their walks, and if I put them all in assembly, we'd be watching until the sun went down. So, I've had to pick out a few, but I have watched them all and have really enjoyed them. So if you sent your walk in, thank you very much. So over to you, Key Stage 2, with some of your best silly walks. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed those walks as much as I know I did and your teachers did who have watched them. So, we're now going to throw back to your teachers who are going to go through some more pupils of the week. Listen very carefully. Your challenge for this week is coming from one of your teachers. So watch each video carefully. One of them will set you this week's challenge. Over to you, teachers. Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. And a special hello to 3A. Thank you so much to all of you who have been working so hard this week and submitting lots of brilliant work because again it made it very tricky for me to decide on my star of the week. But I have chosen someone this week who has been working hard actually for lots of weeks on Edmodo but I was particularly impressed this week with this person's artwork. So in art this week we were looking at pop art as our new style of art and I just really like the colours that this person used and um, how they followed the brief um, and they ended up with a really lovely piece of artwork um, I've also been really impressed with this person's maths how they've been attempting some problem solving this week which as we all know can be a little bit tricky sometimes and also this person has made some good predictions in science of um, what he thinks the is going to happen to a plant that's been in a box and a plant that's been in some sunlight. So this week, my star of the week goes to Zayanne. So well done, Zayanne. Keep up all the hard work that you're doing, please. I've been impressed with all of it, but I particularly loved your artwork this week. Um, and well done to everyone else who's been submitting lots of amazing work as well. I hope you have, all of you have a lovely weekend and I will see you again next Friday. Bye. Good afternoon, everyone. And a special hello to 5S. Um, before I announce the people of the week, I would just like to say congratulations to all members of 5S who are consistently submitting their work and doing some really lovely work and responding to any advice or corrections. Please keep that up. Our pupil of the week this week is um, someone who is on my list that I've been working down for people who have been so dedicated, so hardworking and submitting a very high quality of work. This person um, is not only doing all those things I've just mentioned, but this person has also had to overcome some technical issues, um, has had some obstacles in, in um, uh, submitting their work and this person has not given up once and i would like to acknowledge this person today for never giving up 
Um, even though work is submitted late sometimes, it is always done. There hasn't been one piece of work that hasn't been received. And this includes even corrections or redoing things as well. And that person is Joanne. Congratulations, Joanne. You are this week's Pupil of the Week. Hello, 6M. Our Pupil of the Week this week is for someone who has been handing in their work, regularly giving me work every week, so keep that up, but has also been helping out our team fantastically well on the Epic Reading app. So our Pupil of the Week is Daniel. Keep up that great reading on Epic. You're helping top up our book number and keep your high quality work coming in. Well done, Daniel. Hello everyone and happy Friday yet again from your class assembly. This week I have decided to celebrate children who are creative and resourceful and who are able to use what they have at home and make something wonderful for their art and DT classes on Edmodo. So this week's pupil of the week is Jamila from 5A. I have decided to write her name using paper and color pencil uh, pencils to show how you can write a name in a fun and creative and different way. I'm sure that you have much better ideas how to write your own name. So over here I have tried to write my name using cards. So this week's challenge everybody, not just 5A, not just 5S, but everybody in Key Stage 2, your challenge is to try and write your own name in a creative and fun way and then post them on the wall for everybody to see. Congratulations, Jamila, and happy Friday! And there we have it. That is your challenge for this week set by Miss Linear. You need to find an interesting and creative way to write your name somewhere around your house. Can be inside, can be outside. Miss Linear used some paper and some pencils and then a set of cards. So what else can you come up with? I will again create an event on Edmodo. So it will be an assignment. You can assign your ideas and we will show some of the best in assembly next week. But it is that time. It is time for a few songs. So make sure you've got everyone around you ready to join in. And we'll go straight over to our songs for this week.
is the end of assembly i hope you enjoyed those songs i hope you've got sung up nice and loud so this is the end of our assembly remember look for your assignment for your special secret task this week submit them i enjoy seeing them and i will see you next week for our friday assembly bye